One of the things I really appreciate about canoe camping is that you can live with just a few added luxuries. You can bake when you're backpacking, but out here we can carry a Dutch oven, which uh, is a little bit more of a forgiving tool for getting some hot, fresh baked goods on the table. This morning, what we're working with here are uh, our cinnamon buns. Uh, we're gonna make a basic yeast dough. So about a pound of flour, a bit of salt, a bit of yeast. This yeast I know is fresh, uh, so I'm not gonna proof it. I'm gonna add it directly into the dry mix. Uh, we're gonna splash a bit, of, a bit of water over this dry mixture and then use the spatula here, uh, or if you're feeling adventurous, use your hands to move it into a, a tacky dough. And then we're gonna cover it up and let it sit, let it rest, and hopefully, if it's warm enough, let it rise a bit. What I like to do, and this is a, this is definitely a varsity move. I caramelize sugar, which is just a, taking brown sugar and mixing it with butter, with melted butter, uh, and then letting it bubble up. Uh, you need to be very careful that it doesn't burn, so you're basically making candy. Stirring it a lot, letting it foam, and fo let, letting those two uh, ingredients really mix together. And then on top of that, I sprinkle pecans or candied almonds or some kind of nut like that. Pecans tend to be the best option here and then let it cool a bit. Our next step is gonna to be to add a little bit more flour, uh, to flour our hands, and then to turn it out here on the Wanigan lid uh, and knead it out into the shape that we're looking for, uh, which in the case of cinnamon buns is a long, thin rectangle. We're gonna put cinnamon down, we're gonna sort of zigzag some honey on there, uh, or maybe throw some chocolate chips if we got them, um, nuts, and then we're gonna roll it up carefully, slowly. We'll probably get one and a half good rolls, pinch the top, and then we'll use our spatula here to, to cut about an inch, inch and a half, depending upon how we're gonna bake. You'll have to play with uh, your Dutch oven and, and your, the heat of your fire. Uh, and then we'll place them into the Dutch oven. They don't need to be uh, right next to each other, but you know, fairly close. You want them to bake, and as they expand in the Dutch oven, they'll uh, come into contact with, with each other and help maintain the moisture uh, as, they, as they bake through. What I'm gonna do is create a sort of a side fire where I can move coals to and from to keep a consistent heat. You have to be very careful that you're not uh, creating a second fire pit. Uh, ideally, you're doing this within the same established fire pit uh, or in a very sandy place right next to the fire pit where you can then make sure that you're leaving absolutely no trace. You're moving all the ash and coals uh, back to the fire pit. The length that it's in the Dutch oven, the, le the length that it's cooking depends. It depends on what kind of wood you're cooking with. It depends on how hot your coals are. It depends on how far above those the coals you're working with. If we had charcoal briquettes, we could say pretty, uh, with a, in a pretty exact way, you know, there's there's four charcoal briquettes below and there's six above and it, it cooks for X amount of time. Um, but when we're dealing with a wood fire, um, it's a little bit less of a science and again, a little bit more of, a, of an art. So we're putting our hand to the side, we're feeling it, we're checking on it a couple of times. Um, and maybe you mess up your first time, uh, but the second time you probably won't. When the Dutch oven is fairly forgiving, uh, it heats very evenly. So general rule of thumb is to have more heat on the top than on the bottom. So I'm baking these cinnamon buns with a caramel pecan crust. So to really present that, to really show that off. I'll put a Wanigan lid on top of the opened Dutch oven and then very carefully uh, flip it upside down so that the, the whole baked mass comes down, releases uh, from the Dutch oven. Uh, and then we have a really nice presentation factor here. If we were just baking uh, with a butter crust along the bottom, uh, and then icing them later, we wouldn't necessarily have to do this. Uh, or if we were baking these in a, in a fry bake uh, over a camping stove rather than over a fire, um, we might just ice them in the pan uh, or in the Dutch oven uh, and then go from there. That's a simpler, more accessible way of doing it. The caramel is another step, a little bit more complicated. 
backcountry baking is not a scientific process. It is uh, a process of feel, a process of eyeballing, uh, and a process of enjoying the fruits of wildly divergent baking adventures. But it's really fun because it's an opportunity to use a new tool uh, to practice, to make mistakes, uh, and to roll forward as in the, through the learning process, acquiring a new skill. It's, an, it's a fun and exciting thing.